All right, now we'd like to welcome Dave from the Seneca Park Zoo to the show. Hey, Dave. How you doing? You got your hands full there. I do, I do. So what do you got for us today? I have marine toads for you guys today. I have two. I have Gump, who is here in my hands, and he's got some white coloration on his back. And then we also have Bubba, who is in our carrier here. All right. Oh, oh we can Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> okay, where are marine toads naturally from? So naturally, marine toads are found anywhere from Texas down to the tip of South America. So you'd normally find them all the way down um, into South America, into the Andes areas. Oh. And uh, let him just kind of hang out. Yep. And he would mostly be found um, even in those tropical rainforests, but also in deciduous forests and very closely around humans. Now, these guys are pretty big. I mean, you're looking about the size of a softball. Do they get bigger, or are there bigger bigger frogs? So impressive, yes. Uh, one of the biggest toads that we know of uh, in the animal kingdom. But these guys uh, are uh, very small because of a regulated zoo diet. So if we let them eat anything that they wanted, they could get up to about the size of a dinner plate. Really? Which would mostly be the females. These guys are males, a little bit smaller. But, yeah, these guys would mostly be uh, the size of a dinner plate if wow. let them, you know. And they can still move around that big. Yes, yes, very good at movement, yeah. No kidding. All right, well, that leads right into the next question. Um, do they eat different things than toads and frogs? today since they're so big? So as you can see, uh, these guys are very large and that does kind of widen the amount of prey that they're able to eat. Uh, they can eat a lot of different things just based on their size, but also they hunt a little bit differently. They'll hunt with their sense of smell. So they can smell their prey as opposed to most amphibians will look for movement. They'll wait till something oh. moves in front of them, a fly flies in front, or possibly some prey species walk past them and then they'll jump at them. These guys will sniff out their food. Uh, they can eat dead animals, they can eat plants, um, even dog food that you leave out for your pup outside, oh. all of that can be eaten by our marine toad here. So it's kind of good, kind of bad that as they get bigger that they'll be able to find all yes. food? Yes, so good for them, fantastic. Uh, as a marine toad, if you are a marine toad, that's wonderful right. to go out sure, and you eat be as, bigger. Yeah, you right. be as big as you can, eat right. as much food as you can. Right. For the areas where they seem to populate right. or the areas that you find them in or the areas that humans have brought them to, uh, not a great thing because what they'll do is they'll eat all the prey species of that area. Oh. And they'll outcompete the predators of that area because they are the best toads and frogs you will find in their area, really, really good toad. Um, and they'll outcompete local toads and then they'll eat pretty much everything you have there and then the the local toads will have nothing to eat gotcha now wouldn't this be a good thing for the larger predators in this area since or in these areas since they can all eat the marine toads? So in South America, uh, there are predators that have grown with these guys at the same time. The arms races happened at the same time. And what they know is they can flip one over on their back and eat them from their belly. Oh. But if we were, us humans were to take one uh, and move them to places like Australia has a problem with these guys, yeah. Florida, Hawaii, um, that area does not have their local predators. Nor does those predators in those areas have the knowledge where I can flip one over and eat them. Uh, they go straight at them. They're highly poisonous. So oh. Tough for them to be able to, and that's why you'd have to flip them over. Incredibly poisonous, and it actually comes from just behind their ears. There's a little spot where it will foam up, and their body will become foam all over the top. And then predators get that in their mouths. Anything smaller than a mid-sized dog, it would be fatal. Wow. Uh, anything larger than that, like us humans, stomach flu for a couple weeks. Uh, so these guys are very, very well protected with their own adaptations. And uh, normally, local birds and things of other areas where they're not from will have a tough time eating them. So you're wearing gloves partly because they're poisonous, but other yes. reasons? Yes, so poisonous to us. Uh, if ever I got some of this in my mouth, uh, it would be detrimental to my health. But Would also, it go through your skin in your hands? So it's a good call. So yes, it would go through your skin in your hands. Any cuts you have on your fingers, just want to protect yourself from that. But then also, conversely, we want to protect the frog okay. and the toad. Uh, <clears throat> what we really want to do is, like, we all had, you know, hair shampoo, yep. hand sanitizer, um, lots of different, our own oils. That can go through his skin because because what he does is breathe through his skin. Gotcha. So uh, kind of interact with the environment through his skin. Our oils can go through his skin into his body and make him very sick. Gotcha. So. Cool. Well, Dave, thank you very no much problem. for bringing the marine toads yes. in. Now, <laughs> if you would like to learn more about the Seneca Park Zoo and see other videos about animals, visit our website, homeworkhotline.org. And now, stay right there. We'll be back in a second.